Hey everybody, so we're back. Um, I figured it'd be a good time to go do a application, uh, do an example at least, of using a neural network to uh, model something. So a good um, simple example in the beginning is a XOR gate. Um, so this is a thing of like the XOR gate in electronics, right, where you have two inputs um, and the output is on if and only if exactly one of the inputs is on. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this example. Um, so I came back into our program here and deleted everything besides the definition of, uh, or sorry, the instantiation of the network and this end of program junk, just so I don't jump out. So let's uh, let's go ahead and start from here. Okay. So example XOR gate. Okay. Um, first of all, let's set the name of our network to XOR gate uh, example, let's say. That way when we save it, it'll be awesome. Okay, so first thing to notice is I set this up as a 2-2-1 network. This should be completely sufficient. Um, two inputs because I need two inputs, two, in, uh, two nodes in the hidden layer, uh, of which I only have one, and a single output. Um, so the transfer functions, I'm going to use none because I have to. Let's go ahead and use uh, sigmoid for the hidden and linear for the output. Okay. So let's define uh, the cases. So let's we'll get a double array array called input. Um, and we'll have one for output. And let's start populating these. I guess we have to dimension them. So input equals new double array of size four. Okay. Uh, output equals new double array of size four array. And this is four here because there's four possible permutations of on off for two inputs. Um, so those are going to capture all four different cases. Okay, so for int i equals zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. Let's do this. Let's say input of i equals new double. Uh, there's two inputs. And output of i equals new double. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, just one, just one output. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's actually populate them. So input for case zero, input zero is going to be 0, 0.0. So we'll call that off. Input for case zero, input one equals 0, 0.0. So that'll be off. And the output corresponding to case zero um, for node zero on the output layer, the only one is going to be, well, off, off, so off. Okay? So this is like false XOR false equals false. Okay? So let's copy this one, two, three more times. And what are the other permutations? Well, there's true false which gives us true there's false true which gives us true and there is true true which gives us false okay so let's go back and set all these inputs up so this is case one case two case three case one case two case three I know this is exciting one, two, and three. Okay, so this one is going to be true, false, true. So let's say true is one, false is zero, and output is true, so that's one. Input, uh, false, true, true, so false, true, true. And last case is going to be true, true, false, just like that. Okay, so 
let's um, train the network. So let's get a double error equal to zero. This is going to store the error for training the network for this epoch. Um, by the way, in the future and in this video, I'm going to refer to one pass through all of the distinct training cases, the sets of input output pairs um, as one epoch of training. Okay. And let's also do int max count equals a thousand. All right. And let's also do count equals zero. Okay, so we're gonna do the following. Let's create a do loop. So do while some stuff. Let's say, so let's do it while the error is greater than or equal to, well, how about just greater than 0 0.0001. And uh, count is less than or equal to max count. Okay. What are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's increment our count plus plus. Um, so what this is going to be for is just in case this doesn't converge and I don't hit the minimum error that I'm looking for, we won't be stuck in an infinite loop because that would suck. Um, before I train each epoch, let's do um, the following. So set error equal to zero. Okay. So this is like prepare for training epic train. Okay, so let's go through all of the cases. So for int i equals zero, i is less than four because we have four cases, i plus plus. The error plus equals bpn dot train. Uh, by reference, I need to give it the input case that we're concerned with, so input of i, right? That's an array uh, that will have all of our inputs. I need to give it by reference um, output of i that it corresponds to. Um, a training rate, let's go with 0.15. And momentum, let's go with 0 0.10. Okay, I sort of picked those arbitrarily. Guess I don't need these brackets. Okay. So what this should do is increment the count the whole time, um, compute the, or sorry, set the error to zero, accumulate the error for each distinct case in the epic, um, and if we've achieved a low enough error or we've maxed out, then let's go ahead and exit. And let's go ahead and show progress just every once in a while. So let's say if um, I mod, oops, Sorry, my I count mod 100 is zero. Then let's print out to the console um, the following epic, and then an integer completed with error, uh, whatever. And I'll show it to one, two, three, four. Uh, what's our error? Four decimal places? Okay. So let's do that. Um, and then I need to give it count and error. All right. So that should do that. Um, okay, so let's uh, run this and see what happens. Okay, so we hit F5. And what do we get? Well, it looks like we didn't quite get there. So. After the first 100 epochs, uh, we were at an error of 1.224, and it is slowly decreasing, but we hit our limit out of 1,000, so that did not appear to be adequate. Notice, let's do this one more time without changing anything else. Look at that. So in this case, it was 1.28 at the beginning and closed very, very quickly. Epoch 800 here. Uh, 0 0.0001 was my error, which means I've actually already converged pretty damn close. Um, and I never got to 900, so somewhere in there I, I hit my error limit, and so I'm actually done training. Um, the reason this is happening is because the initial weights that we started with were, in this scenario, perhaps closer to what they are right now, uh, which gives us the actual solution. 
Um, now this is by design, right? We randomized the starting position, but it's a good example that displays that it doesn't necessarily mean if you do it 2,000 times, you're going to converge or that um, I started from a bad place. Um, it's totally random. So that's just the way it goes. So let's go ahead and bump this up to let's say 10,000. That, that should probably take care of it. And let's write it out every 250. Okay. Now, assuming that that's going to work. In fact, let's just run it. All right, I never made it all the way to 1,000, which means I must have achieved my error. Okay, so this should probably work. Um, let's display results. Okay, so for int i equals 0, i is less than 4, i plus plus. Let's do the following. Oh, we're going to need a double array, uh, let's say, network output. And it's going to be a new uh, double array of size one. This is going to be a dummy array to hold the output from the network as I actually run it for each of the cases. All right. So let's do the following. Let's go bpn.run. By reference, I'm going to pass the input value for case i. And I want the output to appear in my network work output okay and for each one of these let's display the results so we should be plugging in let's just do it this way so something out to one decimal place XOR something else one out to one decimal place equals and this will be the output so two out to, let's say, out to four decimal places. Yeah. Okay. And what these should be, oh, I'm sorry, let's, let's do something else here. Let's do case, um, some number. Actually, I'll just make this three because I'm lazy. Okay. Um, all right. So zero, this is going to be the input, the first input, input i zero the second one is going to be input i one the last one is going to be the network output which is what i'm curious about um, zero right the, out, the single output node and the last case or sorry that's the case number is going to be let's just say i plus one so it's human readable okay so let's run this again Ooh, this time it took longer. Uh, Epic 1500 we got to with error 0.25, and then somewhere the next 250 runs, we actually completed it. So these four cases are what our network is actually producing. Now remember, what we should be getting here is 0, 1, 1, and 0. Um, and what do we get? Well, 0 0.007, uh, 0 0.998, 0 0.997, 0 0.003. So close, right? And I could force that to be better by saying, um, where is it? Error right here. Let's make this a factor of 10 better. So let's run this one more time. Ooh, now this is even better. 0 0.001, 0 0.999, 0 0.999, 0 0.002. Okay, but I did that one in less than 750 epics. Okay. So there you go. If you want to get something even closer, you can simply use a higher error tolerance. Keep in mind that this could require more passes through, um, more epics to be trained in order to get a precision answer like that. Um, I will follow this up with the uh, display of the XML and I will post that on Pastebin. And um, I will actually, we'll look at the error surface. That'll be interesting. Okay, so that will be shortly.